Hey, there she is. She got Pooh Bear decks and Wes and Oh, no, 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 no. Don't set your foot on that. that that's a, the a model. That's the model of the... That That is the model, Sabrina, of the... Uh, <laughs> that, that's the model of the uh, the first craft, the first two TAS units get mounted on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the TAS unit. Tasmanian Devil units. The... The John Galt, the John Galt Motorers. Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. That's a that's the the frame. It's not got to put the batteries go here. Look, right here you can see this. You already you already put your hand on it, so you might as well look. You broke the little handlebar. Look, after I glued it, I'm gonna have to get a hot glue gun back out and fix it again. Anyway, but check it out. The Taz units use. Oh, you've seen this before, no, but they need to know. They need to know how they work. They need to know exactly how the TAS units work. They work like the tornadoes. The tornado, the tornado takes, you get these differing winds that create a vertical shear zone. And the vertical shear zone starts to, um, starts to uh, uh, rotate and it creates a vortice, okay? And inside the vortice, what you have is what causes it to rise is because it's this way, shaped like that. So you can turn everything going in here like that. It's like this. Dude, uh, here, I made this thing. Here, let's get the drill out. We're going to be using the drill anyway. Let's just play with it. Okay. We make a mess on the floor, though, if we do. There's this thing I made out of a bell, and this has this lid. This represents the action of the tabs, the action, the action of the, uh, the material on the centripetal zone. So basically here, there's a bell over here. This is the model. Show you that. Okay. So there, uh, this is basically like, it looks familiar, right? It looks like a tornado going on. Okay. Different. Uh, 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 different, differing winds, um, and sometimes a hot and rising air can incite it too. Ultimately, when you get this hook and it starts this way, what happens is, is all this air doing that creates inside a centripetal zone for the slower moving air inside it. Okay, and what happens is the suck zone, and here's that point where the material at the point of low centripetal force. But just enough, it gets in there, and then it gets against that, some, that wall of pressure zone that's created by the different wind speeds inside, and it gets inside that, and it gets stuck in that centrifugal force zone, gets against the centripetal zone, and because it's got an angle there, it rises up due to a force called the Euler force, okay? Centrifugal force works against the centripetal zone to which is at an angle, which causes the Euler force. So what the TAS unit does, well, in a tornado, it does the same thing, same same thing. So what happens is the stuff rises up, gets to the top, and it goes spew. Well, that's what happens at the very top of the tiara of the of the tornado. And the mezzanine is that point down there where it's driving the stuff. Okay, here. So in the TAS units, now get to the TAS units. What's happening is we're using we're using electromagnets to drive a, a material, which is mashed speaker magnets, basically. It's rare earth, just rare earth, not in, made into a fair fluid. We don't want a fair fluid here. What we want is just rare, rare earth, and we're gonna take and spin it up, okay, in here, and, and uh, uh, it's got multiple stages of accelerators. That's what this represented, and you saw that. Um, each one, at the, at the input as a point where there's high current motor here, and a lesser current and higher RPM motor here, a lesser current, higher RPM motor here. So there are windings all, all around this that make up this vortex seal accelerator. And uh, the material comes out of, uh, out of there when it finally comes out, it's at orders of velocity, uh, a magnitudes of velocity, orders of magnitudes of velocity is the Anyway, that material comes out of there and it's immediately taken up 
and the uh, um, conserved momentum is extracted from it in the form of work, in the form of well, horizontal angular momentum is taken out in, in uh, linear momentum, which is immediately extracted in vertical angular momentum in real tight centripetal zone. So the centrifugal force is orders of magnitude above the point where the material and the bottom of the, let me track the point, we bring it, I'm going to bring it to you. Okay, right here. So the, the, the material comes out at an angle right here. It hits the centripetal zone right here. No, 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 boom. It's linear momentum until it hits this, and we get vertical angular momentum. Net force this way. Orders of velocity this way. zip a do and zip a do. As soon as that happens, it comes out here like this, and it, and it sets because it hits at an angle, it still produces centrifugal force this way. And then comes out this hits an angle and sets it sets it up to where the collection bin at the mezzanine, or right here the, uh, in the case of the TAS units, the core part, the motors are mounted by the exterior, and that's what I'm calling the mezzanine. So we got the crown or the tiara, okay? We have the tiara. The accelerator inside. Let me get a model for that. So here's a model for the here's a model for the accelerator, the Vorex seal accelerator, and that's how it goes up in that thing. All right, when the material comes out of here, okay, boom, it it has this. Okay, so um, this would not mean necessarily the dimensions. Okay, understand that in advance. This is just a model. To uh, use as an, uh, to express the uh, the uh, um, the way the thing works. So this model here, what happens? It comes out of there, gives up its uh, it gives up its conserved momentum in the form of work. That's how it works. Now see what do physicists, what do engineers know that physicists forget? Physicists and engineers have one thing difference in knowledge. You want to know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. Physicists forget that in order to get a machine to work, you must extract the conserved momentum in the form of work. It is absolutely necessary. You must apply that torque to something to extract it in the form of work. And when that does, it destroys the conserved momentum. Okay? That's how that works. So anyway, so, so anyway... As it comes out here like this, it's already at an angle, and it sets up. Here, I drew that in counter-rotating, okay? So, it comes out here, sets it up at an angle already for to allow the recollection and the recycling of the material. So, basically, um, in order to uh, for these to work, we get enough force here that overcomes, uh, that, that produces enough um, um, vertical angular momentum, like this. Here's an example. Watch this, Sabrina. Watch. You ready? It can't help but go up. Up! <laughs> when you go... See, the material comes out of the out of the vortex seal accelerator like this. Boom! Okay? And it hits that zone like that. See what happens? It goes up. Anyway, once it leaves... Once it leaves the vortex seal accelerator... Okay? The... Uh, David Sling, the very top. David and Goliath. Goliath is gravity. Anyway, David Sling. Once it leaves David Sling, the material here that's leaving has no idea it was ever connected to this part. Okay, and then this discussion, let's talk about the difference between free flight okay, and free fall. Orbit is free fall. When you start leaving orbit, you're in free, free flight. So if you throw something down towards the Earth, it's primed, biased towards free fall. If you throw it upwards, as it's going up, it is not subject to gravity at that moment. See, I'll throw the bell over to the couch. Let's bring this one to home. We're getting ready. All right, when I throw the bell to the couch, as it goes up, okay, it will be in free flight. 
and then as it goes back down, it will be in free fall. There's a microscopic bit where where its path will be perfectly parallel to the Earth, and that will be that will be uh, well. That's such a small period of time. It's like who cares? It's you know if you did it to do this one. It's point zero 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 equals now. That's what. Okay. So anyway, here we go. Okay, so as it was going up, it was in free flight. As it was going down, it was free fall. Orbit is free fall. Leaving orbit, or leave when you start leaving orbit, that's free flight. But you free flight don't occur until you leave enough orbit where you're completely out of orbit and you're leaving our solar system. Like, uh, what's this, what, like the probe right there. What's it called? Anyway, so basically that's what you all saw in the beginning. That's enough of that. Here, we got to get on to the project of the day. When I, uh, hopefully, I get some of these projects done. I don't have to have my time occupied. That I get to spend time building this thing. Okay? That's what, how that goes. Um, what I need, resources, donations, uh, need to come in the form of materials. We need, we need, Speaker magnets, lots of them. Okay, and then and then we're gonna need some sheet metal and some uh, and and lots of copper wire. So oh, and then let me describe this real quick before we get on with the other stuff. Sabrina, look, I'm gonna show them how this works. See this thing. These are the two TAS units. This represents the two, two first TAS units. Um, let's see. Front of the bike, rear of the bike. Andrea, Michael. Okay, why the Andrea in the front? Well, girls got to come first. Okay. Hurricane Andrea and Hurricane Michael. TAS units on the front and the back. Okay, so they're set up so they're counter... Um, they're... Vertical, this is intended to work in gravity environments, but you, you could use it in a zero gravity environment. So the TAS units create net force upwards, net lift upwards. Lift the whole thing and have no idea. Uh, the force, the material that's coming out of here produced at, uh, at very high velocities. Uh, it has no idea it was ever connected to this thing as it comes out of there. But anyway, um, the, the unit... Uh, on the very back would have, I haven't put the, the stuff on it, but it would have like its seat and all that stuff, the controls, all the batteries down here and feet and go down here and write it here like this. Now, so the way you do, um, the, uh, the TAS units produce angular momentum, produce the, verter, the, the uh, uh, Coriolis uh, force at uh, linear momentum. That impulse is extracted at the core at the centripetal zone. Zoom goes spin. We get lift. Okay, and it's ext and, and as it's as it's extracted, the material slows down. It's taken across across a wide radius that that slowly converts in back into ang horizontal angular momentum, and we got flight. And that's how they work. Okay, so the material inside. Here's how these would work. They'd be able to, there'd be a uh, uh, at each side on the fitting where that's ran by the motor that runs the runs the uh, the tilt. Okay, for the for the uh, to go forward, to go back, to go all the way full blast, to go land to to land. Okay, in zero gravity. Okay, to to uh, turn. Okay, reorient you. Okay, like this. Okay. These you can do this for for uh, this purpose, this purpose pitch control. Okay, so you have all the functions uh, all gimbled out. Anyway, so now um, so that's basically how that goes. So I figured what we'd do is put controls like run this function. Okay, off of a pedal here, so you you all the way. You get your, you'd have with that pedal, you'd only need to have, let's see, you'd have, I'll say that now. See, so I figured this function could be ran off of, uh, 
off of uh, the, the levers, like the brake levers, forward or backwards. That way, you got you, you got a lever you can pull to go forward. And as you're going forward, if you need to, when you need to stop, you can do this. Okay, and then and then um, um, then the uh, uh, the main main uh, main propulsion. The, the impulse rate is how it's done, the, the, the pulse rate that produces the impulse at the, cor the Coriolis force converted at, uh, in the work, uh, conservable minimum absorbed, and converted to work at the uh, uh, primary centripetal zone there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go through that again. I'm so obsessed by this, I can't. Anyway, so here, let me show you this. So basically, here's the whole worksheet. Showing the the basic shape of it is not the actual. The, this is not um, a, a, a an exact graphic representation of the uh, uh, of the uh, thing, but it does show the essence of how it works. Here would be the collection point of the of the cooling slash damping fluid where it's collected. I've drawn it that way, and it's a pencil. I can erase it. Basically, it comes out here, and it collects the fluid at the dividing zone at the dividing zone where the material, the motive material, the armature, is uh, 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 stuck to the outside edges and there's a pocket here where that material is collected up. The whole thing set up against, um, um, so there's like a jacket here and it collects and then it's brought back into here from the radiators. Of course, there'd be a jacket here that allows it and it's brought back in here and brought back into the sides to, to actually and to assist in the recollection of the, uh, uh, of the, of the material and, and drive it down, force it down quicker so, so the cycle rate can be faster. Here, the cycle rate of the material in general. So it is the two, actually the conjunctive uh, action of the cooling fluid fluid coolant cooling slash damping fluid the damping fluid is going to fill the whole space it's not going to have a pulse these are going to work on a pulse because they're going to go bang and they're going to pick it up and then spin it up and as soon as it jumps out of there it's going to hit the next one spin it up jump out and it's going to go boom 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 climb that material right up there just like a tornado causes a causes a or, or even just one of our little dust devils, devils which we've studied all our life okay causes a piece of paper to rise all the way up into the top of the twister, okay? And then it goes flying off and away. And that's where we come up with the idea for this. So anyway, we need to get on with it. They're under construction. Public Space Association stuff. And then the other thing we're doing, the other, the other, that other thing on the notebook. Oh, is it this one? Uh, one of our other projects, a primary project we're going to get done, it. and it actually it's the thing that we're going to be um, uh, wanting to have provided. We're going to get with NASA, have NASA assign us in orbit space so we can do this thing. Let me show you this while we're at it. Okay, here. Um, let me find the page. Uh, okay, that represents a block that can be sent into space. Cement cast. Oh, all right, it's in this one. All right, here we go. Now, let's see some of my previous ideas. Cement blocks, all rebar, bolt together. It was the first one. Uh, beams, girders, blah, blah, blah. But then it's like, well, why does that got to be bolted? It could be flanged. But bolted, it'd give you, they're riveted, it'd give you some flexibility and whatever, like big buildings do. Um, for vibration control and whatever. Um, so, there's a lot of engineering that needs to be done on that one. Where is it? Oh, here, here's a. You know, we're thinking about um, armatures of stage stages one, two, three, four. So you have four state four four poles, eight poles, sixteen poles, thirty two poles. By the time you get up to twelve, uh, twelve stages, you're at, you know a lot. Right. Let's skip the math for now. Anyway, right, so what we're looking for is a picture of Space City. Where's Space City at? Is it this way? Oh yeah, this would be like this is a dividing down of the habitat. So you know, but I'll show you this first. I'll find it. This is such a mess.
Oh, that's some early, some very early thought process working about it. It was backwards. See, that, that's bonk. That's no good. See, this whole thing is like, oh, it's got, all right, there it is. See where that belongs? That belongs in the trash. Okay, so what happened to pictures of Space City? Is it even in this notebook? I got a wrong notebook. No, because here's, oh, here, here, yeah. Here it is, see? It was on the wrong pages. They're basically it. So, up level one. Okay, so far we got one person. Uh, S. Scott Thornton on Facebook. You can find him. Has 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 bought in initial $20 and has provided some other stuff for Public Space Association and bought into Space City for the amount of about 100 bucks. That is my current declaration for the year 2018 in terms of receipts, cash receipts. Okay? Uh, I don't think we need to declare uh, resources like speaker magnets. Just bring as much speaker magnets as you can bring. Okay? They're junk, you know, bring junk, and we don't, we don't have to declare junk. We don't have to declare the cash receipts and the donate. What's on the donation button is going to become, Sabrina, it's going to become a buy-in button, okay, instead of a donation button. The donations, we don't want donations and cash to people to buy our city, buy, buy condos in our city. Now, here's how this works. Each, <clears throat> each section, now here, we're figuring about 10 kilometers in diameter, all right? And uh, uh, the very top, one layer, the very top layer, the, the entry and exit ports right here, and it'll spin like this with the sun uh, facing this edge. So it's like always have uh, sun uh, on the solar panels. And uh, the floor basically, there's basically cast cement a meter thick. Okay, I figured we'd be uh, um, 40, meter, uh, 40 meters by 40 meters would be where the main main connection beams come up the, to connect all the way through to the center with this hollow and it's connected by by you know um, basically hollow all the way through and because the main primary structures occurred so basically we're making earth and backwards earth in reverse so oh that was walter lewin's thing we were playing with it whatever there's a way to look at it from a from an from a, a, a technician's standpoint, the way engineers look at it is this way. So if you think of the whole the th whole thing is a circuit, since since uh, since um, one and two there's two two is twice the value. There's basically three pieces there because two equals the same as uh, R two is twice and it equals the same as two parts the two values of R of, of one. Okay, so basically it's three. It's ratio just, you know, bang. Because of everything else is from here to there, if you think in terms of the whole circuit, rewrite it, re reroute it, you've got a, basically a voltage divider. You know, put a put a battery there and put a load, you just, whatever. Anyway, all right, back to this. So we would have magnetic fields. That was, if you think of this as a whole circuit, then, then it matters if the whole thing was these were inductors, and and uh, then it matters. You apply a, a magnetic field to a full thing, and then you'd have the other version of the equation. You'd want to know what is producing the most uh, um, EMF according to the amount of gauze, uh, because it would be driving into you know basically the way he's got it done. It would be driving a shunt. Anyway, so okay. I don't always do this. This his problem. I don't think of physics. I'm a technician. I don't think of physics the same way. I learned physics differently. A technician, engineer, designer. We built stuff for people. You know, built a lot of stuff. So now here, here's where we figured. This is one thought process. We had our uh, just figuring we could launch a one meter by one meter square, forty cubic meter length. Using the uh, serial uh, solid fuel engines, Hillary serial propulsion systems, the Northrop Grumman, They're, they provide lots of thrust. I was going to check the thrust. It's like, well, we would launch more than just one of those. <laughs> Figured in terms of kilograms, uh, 2,400 kilograms per 
um, square meter. Anyway, is that right? I always gotta double check myself on my notes because it sometimes it's so incomprehensible. Become even to me. Anyway, so the way it worked out was the 10 kilometer uh, diameter. Um, when you do the math and divide it down into 40 meter blocks, you get 800 units to be the luxury suites. And then divide that down again. You got you got is it 40 by 40s? Then you got 20 by 40s, then 20 by 20s, and then 10 by 20s, 10 by 10, 5 by 10, and then the super economy one is 5 by 5, and then it works down this way. So basically, the luxury suites, the way it works out, is they're set up to where they top out, luxury suites would top out at, at uh, about moon gravity, and you'd have plenty enough space there to park your your uh, space bike, or your space viper, or your your space van, your space SUV and that runs on with the TAS units. Okay, so now, all right, here we go. So now, yeah, so the way it works is each level, because it gets tighter and tighter, would have to go and you know everybody's exit the the luxury suites could have a little dome you exit from and parking place a garage on the surface at 0.6 gravity or 0.5 gravity even. You could take them in a little deeper into the nearer than zero gravity if you want okay anyway somewhere along the way down the length of the thing A, that's a new kind of amplifier design. And I need a nice, powerful audio amp to run my subwoofers. Oh, oh actually, and I thought, yeah, you know, this design gives me. Uh, I needed a little. I got a little um, 80 watt speaker, and I'm thinking, I'm take that 80 watt speaker. It's a tiny little speaker. speakers 80 watts right here that okay so I thought well you know it'd be cool to make a little head that could live on this speaker a little that like this amp head with a little input little controls and give it 80 watts and make it 80 watts not way much more than this so we give it a power supply I mean it didn't have to have a we'd give it a, an external power supply maybe and then and uh, so uh, I would use a uh, Biamp that came from Biamp. I remember working on Biamp and fixed five of them, a dozen of them, 50 of them. Being a technician, electronics technician. Hmm. So, what that circuit was, it's a um, it's a um, uh, 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 AB push pull um, trans, uh, semi. Uh, Uses a small transformer to establish a ground for to to commonize the input. To uh, oh, here's this again. Okay, so back to this. This is what I was trying to show you. Is this thing up here? In you get in and out on the ends. This is the greenhouse section. Okay, and all be glass. No, all this covered with silver panels, but one meter thick cement. So you're like all safe and everything, safe and sound in there. So as the thing goes around and around and around. You know, up at your top level, where you have your exits at each place, where the luxury suites would have this many levels. So you have 40 by 40 here, and then you go up a ways to about where you get, where we calculate it, figure it out, to where you got 1G, and then you go up to up to 0.5 Gs on your moon gravity, or 0.6 or whatever, because 1G would be, 0.6 would be. Here for one G's down here would be your basement would be would be a good site good 1.5 G's or more okay so um so anyway we haven't done all the math yet on this by the way that's what I'm talking um 
So what happens is, is the very one layer is 800 units up here, and then we would divide them by that 1600, a couple layers of 16s, you know, and a couple layers of the next one, and a couple layers of the next one, all the way down to the very bottom where we got the five by fives here at the very bottom end of this greenhouse. And this greenhouse would be the same kind of greenhouse this one is. They're both ends that have the same food and food supply, air cleaning, whatever. And in the greenhouse areas is where all of the plant life, the worms, and all the butterflies, and all the little doojahs that are here on earth that need to go out there live. Okay? Except for your pets, or your dogs and stuff. There's no problem with, well, uh, because of the size. The size, the mass, the dimensions will actually possess a little bit of gravity. So we're going to ask for a lunar one orbit tractor orbit, track, a lunar one traction orbit for a period of time, and then we're going to want a tow. After we built the whole thing in full, we're, we're going to ask for an orbit for construction. Then we're going to tow it to a. Uh, Then we're going to tow it, tow it to lunar traction orbit, and then hold the moon, slow the moon down a little, and pull the moon back in, get it stable to a perfect orbit so we don't lose it again. That re stable, that re activates some of our tectonic action, it gets our magnetosphere back, and therefore, with a magnetosphere, we don't have as much. Uh, um, as much radiation coming in the atmosphere from solar flares and other activities like solar wind. And therefore, uh, we reduce the, uh, uh, some of the uh, activity of the greenhouse and global warming by getting our moon back. You think about what, what really caused global warming, maybe. Maybe it's not man at all. Well, yeah, there's a lot more greenhouse gases. But, well, actually... See, mankind plus, how about that? Mankind plus losing our moon. If you think about what losing the moon does, losing the moon causes a reduction in the friction activity that is occurring in the uh, tectonic plates inside the, the thing that's driving the molten core. You know about the molten core beans? The earth? The reason for volcanoes? Wow. <laughs> All right, here we're moving on into what we're doing today. Kitchen. Here's this. The van. We're gonna do. Guess what? See this? Uh, look. Oh, stove still on. But guess what? If you have mice. Oh, look, our, our pants locked down. If you have mice, you leave the stove on. See the little red dot. Leave the stove on. Making just a little bit of heat for the room. We got it on low. Making a little heat for the room. Keeping that warm. And guess what? That's a place the mice don't go. Want to see another place? Want to see another place the mice don't go? idea for a mouse proof mat. We're going to take a whole bunch of little sharp pointy things and put them really close together. For our fingers, we don't feel it. We'd feel like smooth. To the mouse, it's like this. Ah, to us. See? You could do that with yourself. Just thinking. Just thinking. It's better than stinking. Right, that? Right, Bean? So. Anyway, here's what not to do. You contemplate this while I do this.
Uh huh. Yeah, we can take that loop and use it. Anyway, here's what not to do. That. Don't do this. When we opened the box, we did this. That killed us being able to take it back because of. We didn't even notice it until we went to put it on that this, this, and it goes here. So now, now, and then we did this and this one, did that, and guess what we can't do? We can't take it back. So what do we do? We know what to do. We be an engineer, a designer, a builder, fabricator. We be somebody that knows that in order to get a machine to work, you must extract from it the conserved momentum. Rule number one. You must subtract the force. as far as moving something along you take that force to move it and apply it and it moves something <laughs> anyway so this is a case where the preserved momentum on the object being moved then matters and is then either sustained by zero resistance like that in this case or actually I gotta say Minimal resistance. Okay, I'm going to say it correctly. Hmm. Want some? Yeah, this is a con. Here it is. have the tap and here's what we've got to do now we have suggestions suggestion one see they're alike they're so alike but this one has this piece that threads in there so option one we went to go looking for parts right, this has this piece threads in there and it's fine with their bone okay All right, now so this piece got to come out and go in there and move over. So anyway, let's take it out. Can we take it out? There it is. Okay, let's put this in there and do that. Okay. So now, there's no parts. All right. So this has this piece, and uh, so we can't take it back. So we have suggestions. So we can just well, just since you, you know. I said, well, you know, in my mind, well, the easiest way, the most sure way, the solid way, to make sure it's going to work, is just, and we were looking for the adapters, we just put an adapter in, and that was hard, because we can't find the adapters, it seems, so that's a specific automobile, automobile specific part. Okay, so, there's okay, next move, see here, go and tap it, thread it in there. Just gotta go right in the middle, go straight down, and it'll go into the jack, just like this one. Okay. It's dimensionally the same. Right in the middle. Except the difference is, is this one don't have a hole for that. Kind of like me, you know, I got this. 
spot for it, but I don't have the right. Then I get this one stretch flex wheel. I can stretch it in. I use my fingers about a couple inches. Mm. I'll find somebody with a big sledgehammer and a big giant, you know, these big fishing weights, iron fishing weights. And polish off the end real good. Stick it in there. It's got whack. Take a couple guys to do it. Might find get off. Anyway. <laughs> so. So in this case, we need to do surgery. The same surgery I need right here. And, and I, you know, I want to, I think I'm going to post this. I'm going to do a fund me, gofundme.com, full gofundme account for my bottom surgery, which is just, I only want, see, I got the, and I want that. We were in love with him. We're in love with Ron. That's Ron. The, the part down there. We're in love with Ron. But, I see, we just need this. This is, think of this like the girl, full girl. Oh, here, you know. <laughs> <Better yet. laughs> here you love this analogy. Okay, here we go. Alright, this piece. Let's get the thread in right there. Okay, so that's like Ron right there. That's Ron to me. This is our body. Mm -hmm. And this would be, this would be a complete body. Having this, this would be our desire to have Ron still. Maybe you can put a couple of mods, but still there. And open up the girl. Because right now we're like this. See? This is going to be our GoFundMe account uh, video. That's right. Anyway, right now we're like this. We got that, but we don't have the hole. So that the appropriate fitting can go in there. And we need that fitting. We need it badly. We need to be like this. See, here's a full bone girl. Right, with the hole. And this would be like the clit. And then this would be us after the bottom surgery. Our clit. Okay, that's all we want. We want that bottom surgery. We didn't need nothing else. We didn't have to do hormones or nothing. We got some really nice breasts going on. Really nice, cute body. Yeah, of course, you've all seen it. So, maybe if I keep trying to get this dog to go in, looking for Gizmo. I called it. I called that doggy little man, who's unfortunately passed away. Gizmo, because I thought that dog came from now. He's looking for Gizmo Hobby. Trying to Gizmo. I guess he's out there. He's, he's just ignoring, ignoring him. Oh, being a bad doggy. Oh, Gizmo is being a bad boy. Eh? All right. Anyway, so there you go. Now I'm gonna do a GoFundMe account. Sabrina, just let you know. To get my hole for the appropriate fitting, so that we, so that we don't. See, right now we're like this. If this was our GPT, okay, and now we got it, okay. We got the spot for the hole, see, but it's not there. So we need to do this so we can be like this. Like this, our clit, our giant, our clitoris gargantua, clitora gargantua, then modified from a pina clitata into a clitora gargantua. Keep it and get our bottom surgery so we can get the appropriate fit. How do you look at it? You, you, you don't think I should do it? You're looking away from me like I'm like I'm something wrong with you. So what do you think about that? Huh. 
Okay. Is it okay, really? You're thinking about it. What would be wrong with it? I need it. It wouldn't take anything away from you. Keeping it as added as you do. Then it would either off your sleep satisfaction. Anyway, let me get back to the project. Over here. So basically, what we're doing here is we're going to take and do drill it and tap it. And drill it and tap it. And drill it and tap it. And then drill it, tap it. Because, see, it was suggested, it was suggested that we, uh, was, that we, uh, just take the guts out. So since you got to take the feet flip out and pull the guts out in order to drill it and tap it and clean it and make sure there's no shrapnel in there. So the suggestion was, well, we should just take the guts out of this one and move it to that one. I don't have a home, number one. Number two, honing it is extra work. Honing it is equated with drilling it. Same job. To me, some of the same equivalencies. So, anyway, this is the ABS switch, is what this is. The ABS switch. I forgot to look, pay attention, whether it was an ABS system, uh, but I was ordering the chip flip block. The drill one was fine. It was made right. And I said, that's what the thing I need. And then so, anyway, we drill and tap. Because, because it is cousins, you Because cousins, uh, I can trust this one. It's new. It's got new cylinder, new parts. This was just, you know, manufactured cast material from their molds. Okay? It's new. It's really never a perfect guarantee, but usually when it comes to master cylinders, it's brand new rubber. Brand new parts. They're usually not bad. Usually nothing wrong with them. So we can trust it. So we're going to drill it and tap it. So the first thing is finding the tap. So... Uh, we'll get back to you. Oh, well, Beans, I'll tell you what. Don't have the tap. You don't have it. You're going to have to go to do it best hardware in the morning, okay? Unless they're open right now. They might still be open right now, huh? Do I have time to if I just leave you home? Huh? You can stay at home. I'll get the drill to the belly scratch tonight. Okay, so you'll be alright with just staying home for a bit while I make a quick run to do it best hardware. See if I can get the tap and put the old master cylinder in there, or just take that. I don't need a master cylinder, I just need this thing. I need this piece right here. That piece right there, and I can fit that. See how it's got the taper? It's meant to thread in and meet this other taper. this tape this uh, uh flare fitting so it's a fair flare fitting in there ours is going to have to mount our thing going to have to mount with teflon tape and then the other thing we've got to do is drill it with a small hole first and make a limiter orifice and bring it out and then drill it down a ways and then tap it and so it can't go it only needs a tiny little hole going down here because i put a pressure on it and, uh, and, and there's a limiter in there. So, um, um, do I have a way of measuring how much pressure there it takes? No. Okay. So, what I can do is just simply, simply send a probe down there and find out what the diameter of that hole is. We drill it that diameter and that'll match. We've got to drill it down that far. Okay. Or thereabouts. I'm going to think a little bit of difference. A little bit of difference will matter that much. But it would matter because it... A different orifice changes the pressure you arrive at this switch oh yeah see so you can't just go drilling it all the way through this big size hole you have to pilot hole it first so we could fly to do it best hardware or we could start drilling the pilot holes center punch it Hardware is 
stop by and I'm down. I need another cup of yogurt already. Hopefully they got some on the shelf. Huh. Right. I feel the best when I eat this yogurt. I think it's our tongue is hankering for flavor. If we eat the yogurt. And the food that our tongue hankered for. We can't wait till the balloon get big. Balloon girly boy. <laughs> if we eat those foods normal like most people do, our, you see, we've discovered our metabolism. changed over the years because, well, we figured it out the way it works. We're going to build a building like this. If we want to take just right off the gate with our space city and, and haul some stuff from Earth to make the first 800 units, they have to be 800 units before artificial gravity could take effect. Why? It's because the units have to, one disc has to be done. One layer needs to be done and capped and in, in a disc. Like a poker chip. Before it can be spun into artificial gravity. So, we could have inhabitants in it. And, uh, and uh, as the construction goes on and the greenhouse begins to be built. Um, another layer is built. Now. What can happen is, as there's, as time goes on and there's more inhabitants out in space, the asteroids can be collected up, can be made into cement for making more walls, or for, actually for Earth, call it Earth. And then actually, you know, using laser cutters, it wouldn't be that hard to just cut it straight out of rock. But I like the idea of some cement and some steel reinforcement. <coughs> tends to be a little stronger <coughs> than just plain rock. You know what I'm saying? It could be designed with rock. It could. Pin them together, cable them, drill them to bottom of the cables going to them all the way, make a ring. Anyway, the idea of the ring is that they have plenty of mass. That's why 40 meters by meter thick and 10 kilometer diameter. 10 kilometers, 10,000 meters times pi, 3.14159, okay, that's about all you ever have to remember, because that's about most people stop there too, but most people, oh, a lot of people stop at 3.141, I think 3.141596, you got on your on website, PSA website, PSA.nerdmasterjukes.com is a is a link to a page. It's a million digits of pi. You think you could ever remember a million digits? See, that's the bitch about my eidetic memory. I remember stuff I can't ever forget. The stuff I don't want to remember. The stuff I want to remember, if I decide to remember it, i got to cram it in there and pound it in. Anyway, that's why we have... 
you never <laughs> that algebraic of formulas and stuff like the, like the, the symbols and you start talking in symbols well we can do x and y's and stuff that's neat but you start talking about uh, and it's just we gotta look them up all the time the delta phi all of those symbols you gotta always look them up if we wanna use them Anyway, mostly as a technician and an engineer, we've dealt with real numbers and everything, so we never got, um, we never really got acclimated to symbols so much, except for looking at the formula and, uh, and uh, figuring out what the formula should be, but we need to know, find out what we need to know to do the thing we're doing, right? So we look up the formulas and use them, figure out the numbers we need using the real numbers, crunch the numbers, and come up with the data, and there we go. And that's what we learned, how we learned how to do everything. Just by basically doing stuff. But we spent a lot of time in libraries. Ah, poop. It's a poop bear. A poop bear. So, how about that? You think we ought to, I think I ought to do this. Put a jacket on, put some, put some, some uh, heavier pants on over this thing, and uh, put a jacket on, and go get something, and make a quick bike ride. We got time to do it before sunset. Diddy, Space City's gonna help. A lot of population can leave the Earth. Areas that flood a lot, just empty them out. Let them flood. Mm -hmm. That wildfires in California was, we're going to be living there for a while. Okay, for um, well, here's what we want to do uh, for inhabitants of the verse, okay, that's still here, uh, those that have the houses in the places that are da in danger of forest fires and stuff. That's a thing like that. See, she likes it. It's in here. Okay, those that, are, uh, that we have the, the invention off of the Vortisteel accelerator, we came an invention. Okay, they they can put out fires for miles. Okay, <laughs> for miles, I'm telling you, we know how to throw water for miles. I can throw water for five miles. You understand? I can f create rain in this city with one of these and that diesel engine that's in that bus. You understand? The diesel engine is. How many horsepower does it take to move that bus? Figure out the weight. Do the math. I'm not going to do it, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'll, I'll just I'll just estimate it in my head. Guess what? That motor in that bus is at least a thousand horsepower. It's like a track. It's like an uh, an eighteen wheeler motor. Okay, you know what I'm saying? An tractor truck. Okay, that's an excellent application for a diesel engine. The diesel fuel hangs out for hangs out for years. That bus, when when he took the mechanic up there that the, the, the started that, um, uh, the, that helped him get it going when he bought that at the auction. It's a dead person's auction, by the way. Uh, he buys stuff from dead people. This guitar, <laughs> this guitar, and 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 this guitar came. Uh, I, I got this guitar as a payment. Anyway, ooh, out of tune. Anyway, this came from an auction. Same kind of way that bus came. Somebody had died, and uh, it was a charity auction. So the money went to charity. The money for this guitar came from this guitar, which is charity. Um, you can go on Sabrina's page. <laughs> she likes this one. So you can go on Sabrina's page. <coughs> there's a button. You go to Sabrina, the canine actress, out on Facebook, and there's a button there that'll let you donate to the suicide prevention. Uh, uh, I don't know exactly which one it is. It's just one, one of the suicide prevention lines. Okay. Yeah, we almost did that. We've had friends that have gone that way. Anyway. Yeah, 
See, this is how I'm teaching myself how to play, to play switch play. So I can play them right hand and left hand upside down backwards like, like Derek Gales, which we want to jam with. And I want to just fucking rip his brain. And then we go, like play like he does. Or no, first, oh, we're rip his brain like this. We'll pick him up. We'll pick it up. Oh, I'll do everything you do. Well, I'll we'll run right with him. <laughs> you know? Fucking walk right along them. I would love, you know, I would love to play with Eric Clapton before he got where he's getting arthritis. We can't play so much. <sighs> and we're so sad that we, we would love to jam with B.B. King. And, 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 but, you know, we didn't know. We heard, it, we saw a video after he died, said, oh, we'd, we'd collaborate, jam, we'd collaborate with anybody. Or he said, I would collaborate with anybody. I didn't know. I didn't know. All I had to do was ask. Well, I wrote that song <coughs> in the dedication to B.B. King playlist. There's that song. I need to share that. When is B.B. King's birthday? Let's share that on his birthday. Oh, okay. she likes that idea too. Okay, she likes that idea. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So. Tune? Is that an E? She says it's an E. Is this, an, is this a D? And she says that's a D. Is this a, is this a C? Mm, she says that's a C. You do have perfect pitch, I guess. We're going to check it with the tuner. How about that? Huh? You check it with the tuner? Yeah, you could. Let's do. Let's get that online tuner right now and check it. I really would love, I want to get one of those. I would get one of those strap-on tunes. Those are the best. You just clip it on the guitar and you leave it there. And it's there forever. <laughs> or move it from one guitar to the next.
she likes that progression. It, that progression is cool. It modifies. It actually it moves parallel fifths, but it modulates through. Through you, you got every key signature in the book. Oh yeah, there's an E, A major. It's E major, A major, C major, D major. So what keys would it be? So it's, an a, it's major, so we got, because E major, we've got E major, right? And with E major, that can be an Ionian, which is a key of E major, or a, a Lydian, which is, E is a Lydian, was, uh, we're going to always think about this shit and figure it out. <coughs> e is a Lydian. As a mixed Lydian is the key of uh, A. Okay, so it's E, A, and B flat we got. Mm -hmm. Here you go, so a mixed Lydian, we grab, we, we get our Ionian. I'm thinking B. <laughs> Where did I get B flat from? Uh, where's my coffee cup? Okay, key of B. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, then the E, you got the same thing and B the it can be either the the, the one, four, or the five. See that could be that can be three keys. You find them in the one, four, and five. See? And <laughs> then when you're up here in the A, it can either be the key of E, the key of A, or the key of A has the key of A has the Lydian. Far you're mostly key of A and E, but you got the key of B also. See, and then, and then, so as you're doing this progression, you get to the key of D. Oh, well, we're, we're still on the key of on when you're playing the key of A. You have its fifth, which is <coughs> so your A, B, and E here. So you have the key of D. So so far you key of the A. Key of A, key of D, key of B. That's four keys. Okay. And then when you're in the key of C, okay, C has C, F, and G. So now you have the key of C, key of F, key of G. Okay. And then when you're in the key, then the last chord, in the, when you're playing the D, you have um, Yeah, you have the D, you have the So you have the key, basically four keys. That's how it's how it unfolds. You have four keys, which is the key of E, key of A, key of 
Oh, five B. Key of A, key of B, key of B, key of G, and key of B. Five keys that progression takes you through. So you can change the progression and and alter that in a in a break or some kind of different um, kind of um, what, uh, what whatever you call it, a break or a turnaround or you know some kind of interlude. See, and you and you give it that one. That one's tradition, more traditional, been used a lot. Could ooh, that'd be neat to start it that way. You start it. that one take it climb it upwards come on let's do it let's try it again She likes it. You like it, huh? She likes it. We're gonna make it that what we're gonna call that. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, the Sabrina's, Sabrina's, Sabrina's. You wrote this song. This is something you wrote. This is your composition, isn't it? You inspired this, didn't you? You put in my head. You put in my head, didn't you? Yeah, because you tuned the guitar. Help me tune the guitar, didn't you? Yes, because you've got perfect pitch, and you're a music dog, right? And she plays drums. We need a drum for her tail. We want a drum for her tail. We need to find a drum that fits well. We could, I, you know, I, oh, that's what we need to do. I need that snare drum. It can be a cheapo. I don't care. Just buy a cheapo snare drum, full snare drum, and I've got this acoustic guitar now. And a nylon string guitar. One that I found that was broken. It's got a, it had a good neck. Take the neck. <coughs> mount it on that snare drum and string it with acoustics so it becomes a snared guitar that doubles as a drum. Give it a, give it a set it up so it's got a place where, so you can tap on it and drum string. So you can mute the strings and have, it, have a regular snare or open the strings and tune them to a thing and have a crab that play a chord when you hit it and then you run a slide on it if you want. And somebody, I can put that in, in anybody's hands and they would be making music. <laughs> oh, Sabrina could have a set of notes up there that were in anybody's hands next to her or my hand or whatever, and she could play it with a tail. And go, Waka, Waka, Waka. Oh, Waka, 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 there's a tail. Waka, Waka, Waka. Rest it back in the guitar. See, that's what they would do. Waka, Waka, Waka. Waka, 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 Waka. Hit that thing with that tail. Quack, 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 quack. All right, now play the music. Here, here, you whack the guitar as I play it. You ready? We're going to do it. We're going to play it together. Ready? Like this, pretend this is the band hall. The snared band hall. You ready? Whack the tail. Go whack, 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 okay? Like this. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, four. Boom, gone. You're supposed to whack it with your tail. <laughs> okay, ready?
This helps me cope. This and the marijuana helps me cope with all of you who are dissident. But we want to hear from the good people. We want the good people to come to our mixer. Crime, we're going to talk about crime again. Let's go back to the subject of crime. We know why crime, crime is. We understand the psychology of crime. We, we've, uh, we went into this. We, we had a colored youth. Our first school, our first school, uh, our experience with school started to damage school, we were all this, we were all half we wanted to go, and then, and then, uh, and then what happens is the, is the, uh, first, my, my, our parents said, oh, our little Ronnie's so smart, my little girly, girly boy, thing, it's like a little girl, and I had hair, oh, I had such beautiful hair when I was a baby. Somewhere, somewhere in my folk family, which, or somewhere in my, in my other, other relatives, which we don't really see very often in the past. It's, 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 I, I want to see new people. I want to see people. I'm, I'm an adult. I want to meet new people. I want pe people who come to her mixers, good, honest people that want to promote, uh, promote space, uh, bring Space City back. Let's make Space City. Let's get to world peace. Well, Space City, here's what Space City represents. Space City represents, represents learning how to get along. One, Space City represent, learning, represents mankind learning how to become a closed loop and live as a, a whole, a whole um, colony. Uh, uh, mankind and, and what we call um, an interior nature environment, a greenhouse environment in, in the space city, okay, a green, where, you know, convert oxygen, all that stuff, so it can convert the poo, everything nature does, it needs to be there, okay, and um, so the, uh, the reason for space city is, yes, teaches man to learn how to become a fully functional integral closed loop with nature and then bring that to the planet. Okay? So, we need the others, uh, uh, other people other than me to come along and help build it. Volunteers that want to become space constructors. So, we decided with two things. Public Space Association runs on physical donations. And what for my for the research and development, we need resources, not no money, not necessarily any money. We don't need anyone and just asking for any money at all. <coughs> Space City, however, which we are endeavoring in ourselves, it's part we're we're connecting it to the Public Space Association, but it is a private endeavor that we're doing. 
we're going into the real estate business. What we have to bring into the equation is lots of knowledge, experience, and know-how developed from being in the field from years of being a repair engineer to, uh, to a construction engineer, work construction jobs, I've done uh, repair jobs, I've done every job, every job. I've had my fingers in every job. We have experience in every job. Do you understand what that means? It means we're the one, the one qualified to, to design Space City because we, uh, as the architect of Space City and, and chief engineer of Space City, okay? And where Space City needs to do is we need to be, um, um, Space City is the, uh, uh, is, is going to be, um, it's a space estate project. I'm going into the space estate business. So today we're going to go to the NASA website and we're going to try to get hooked up with, um, uh, try to get hooked up with what we're affiliating with Home Depot, by the way, with the Space Association. And let you know about the Public Space Association. In general, everybody uh, takes up space, even Sabrina, even the ant, the microbes that I put in my cup and drink with water when I fast. What do you mean when I fast? Hey, there's Ron. Hey, yeah, the invisible man. Oh. Yeah, it comes out from in me. There's Ron. Ron. <laughs> Ron, guess what? Ron, who has lived it, lived the man life, is one who has our experience. That's how we got our experience. Is being Ron, we became enlightened. Now, we put the girl, the, the Ron E part, the one who was born. When we were little, we had we wanted to play with my sister, play with dolls, and the girl have to come out. And of course, physically, I'm I'm physically in half and half. And we're, let's not get into all that. With that, none of that matters. People think that, that homophagetics or people are, are, are not intelligent or not trustworthy. They have mistrust for all of it. And, and it's all bullshit. I'm telling you, it's all bullshit. Okay? So, here's how this goes. Oh, well, see, you know why? It's because you, you go on Wikipedia and I need to change that shit. And you put XXY. In there and it goes to the old page and, it, and the old page says uh, uh, it was thought to be uh, reduced intelligence is one of the traits and you know what it's not reduced intelligence they used to think autism was reduced intelligence okay now you know what goes along with autism if you can focus it you know about that anyway so we learn to focus at some, and we get control, and we become lawn for a while, and do all these different jobs, marry Karen, all that stuff, have children, and and uh, and then and uh, and then the process. Um, well, she goes and passes away. But you know, we were gonna, we were, we had to lose weight. We had the appendicitis, and then we went back to eating again like we did, and we gained. We, we turned into a boat of weighing over 250 pounds and was about to die of heart congestion. Oh, and visceral fat infusion or invasion. Um, um, and visceral fat invasion of congestive heart failure. Cardio. What's, what else do they call it? Is it car, um, cardio impedance? And visceral fat cardio impedance syndrome. What that one? That's a good name for it. They come up with names. <laughs> They're all valid. Anyway, we were about to die of it, and and uh, and and guess what? Um, uh, well, we found it. We put my own stethoscope here, and we went. Oh, and I was already. I was like Ron, Macho Ron. Yeah, I'm still living with Macho Ron. Never any more muscle than I had now. But I was big, I looked badass. Slumpy, big gorilla. Not Joe Ron. Okay. We got videos we're going to put out 
Throwback Thursday. We start publishing why we were away from the internet for so long. We were all like happening on Twitter and shit, and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> well, we had went away and, uh, and all our energy went away. And we're going to ask for some help on Twitter followers, friends, long term friends to help get our energy back again, and get, get unstuck. Right now we're stuck. We're getting no views on YouTube. We're getting, uh, uh, we only have 18 subscribers. Uh, People that were, were in communicate with me, that were working hard towards the goals, towards world peace and stuff, and all that. Um, well, you know, it was. They're like. seem like they're ignoring me or something. You know? And I don't know why, you know, but. <clears throat> maybe. I don't know, I don't get it, but. We need to recover from that and get back to where people are, are listening to what we have to say because it's important. Because we have fires to put out. zip a -doo. We're going to demonstrate that. Well, we have, well we've demonstrated some, some of the other videos have it in there. Okay? Maybe we should make, I got one that says space stuff. Space stuff is where we're going to put the space association, public space association videos and videos about our, uh, our uh, Space City project, and uh, uh, anyway, so basically, uh, uh, we want the Space City to be about 10 kilometers in diameter, um, and made out of cement, assembled, it would be launched in blocks, and then assembled out there. Basically, reinforced cement. The, the inertial rock. Uh, 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 first one needs to come from Earth. The first ringlet, and uh, uh, the materials that it takes to close that ringlet off in its disc shape, it can be inhabited right away. So the way that works is we start the first ringlet. I need to get busy with this master thing. I'll talk about it while we work on it. I brought my notes over so we can talk about this kind of stuff, this stuff while I'm doing this. So anyway, this thing, this is the public, this is a public space association project. Space City, however, is a business venture. Space City, we haven't figured out the, what the cost of each unit is going to be. The luxury suites... I figured <clears throat> this, this doesn't represent actual dimensions, but we figured we could take and use the serial, the, the uh, Hillary serial propulsion systems, the serial uh, uh, multi-stage rocket boosters, and launch big blocks of cement uh, that are already built up with reinforcement in them. So this was one of the first ideas, and I realized <clears throat> this is actually pretty light. We're not talking about 102,000 point three three eight kilograms we could do more than this so we think okay well you know maybe we just put a big slab maybe we do a 40 by uh, a 20 by 40 slab and send it up anyway so the way it works out is the, the top layer one of those pictures of that the Taz unit how it works Splash! I can't help but do that. And it grabs it, so it slows it down. And brings it back around. So this way, it goes zoom, hits that, gives up the energy, and then it's recollecting it like that. And it does it again. And that's the pump that pumps the cooling fluid that actually is doing the steady flow. And the pump is done with magnet and electromagnets. Anyway, we're working on it. We're basically, we're about, about where though though is that where force one has to exceed force one plus force three, and that's force three is these other forces here. Ultimately, has to exceed has to be a, a, a large enough ratio to where it'll to where to where it will uh, do some actual work. So it means orders of magnitude above uh, above 
this needs to be orders of magnitude above all these forces plus oh, a vast percentage. So, you know, that's the reason why none of them work is because they only get about a 2 to 1 ratio. This here, this here in the process here represents about a 100 to 1 ratio. So that gives you a lot more range to actually do some real work. Um, so, here's how the Space City unfolds. So let's get back to this. Let's get back to the business part. All right, here's, here's kind of an image of Space City right here. This one. So, Space City is basically the greenhouse. This is how you get in and out. Okay. Uh, there's it made of basically each slab goes up and it goes this way like this. So we're the, the slabs go up and this this is actually way because of the diameter. <laughs> This is way small. This arc, for the diameter, this arc will be like almost invisible. You won't be able to see with your eye that arc if they're in an individual piece. But when they all go together and the pieces block together in their angles and they, they make this big, huge... Oh! 10 kilometers times pi. 3.141596, I think. Three thousand one hundred and forty-one kilometers, which times a oh no, uh, yeah, times pi is ten. It's three point one for one. Three point one for one times three point one for one times ten is thirty-one. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. I was already multiplying it into uh, into meters. <laughs> anyway, uh, three point one for one times ten is thirty-one. Point four one kilometers in circumference. All right, I did something wrong. I just didn't realize what I did. Oh, or maybe not. Oh, did I? Did I do something wrong? <clears throat> That's the Viper. That that's our flagship uh, flagship for the Public Space Association, right there. It's four passengers. It's got four individual units. in here. Uh, that's the lamp. Yeah, it's kind of, that's a, a model. Um, okay, here, there, there, there's a TAS unit with the, that shows a, a, a version, a means of the collection, shows the, 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 the TRR section, and then it shows the mezzanine thing, it shows the accelerator, shows each particular stage. And it shows there's some multiples up to 12 for, until, it, until the exhaust. And then here's the, uh, um, here, here's where it recollects the bottom and the material goes back up. This shows the collection of the cooling fluid through the radiator with the centrifugal pump comes back and gets, gets uh, it put back into it. And this shows the capacitive can with the, with the bladder, the bladder can that lets this thing work uh, completely in a closed loop under pressure so that, so the cooling fluid can expand into the bladder can. Okay, so ba basically that's kind of how that works. But 
this is not quite how this works because this picks up the fluid in the in the uh, the process where the material the uh, um, the armature material is is clinging and stuck to the to the centripetal zone here, and then there's a cavity that lets the that separates the cooling fluid from the from the uh, 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 the uh, armature mass. So uh, uh, and then there's one other advent I've added to that also this this fluid as it's picked up here comes back in. I'm going to add to it uh, inlets here that uh, that provide for the uh, uh, the recollection of the motive mass back into a, a horizontal angular uh, uh, trajectory. Anyway, moving on, let's find space city back to the business stuff. Ah. Uh, yeah, see, I crossed that out. That was my, some previous thought experience. There. All right, anyway. Ah, here, this is a good one. You like this. This is one. This is like the multi-passenger version. You use multiple TAS units, one on each corner for control, and then multiples for main lift all the way down the middle. The spot for the batteries, all the battery supplies and stuff, controls, uh, all the control electronics go in the front, radiators go in the back, batteries go on the sides. That's cool stuff. Huh? Oh, this is a good one. This is a thought experiment that involved the use of a belt, okay, where, um, where a belt, belt and pulley, the small pulley will always, will put, produces more centrifugal force than the big pulley, but on a belt and pulley by itself, <coughs> you get the net forces equalized because of the because of the time involved okay over the thing but but so we had this thought experiment it's like well you know if you put a weight on the belt that changes that dynamic and then you know on a regular belt then over here you have that weight producing force more force over here than it does over here and then you have a bias okay so we thought okay if you if you were to add the weights here, you know and time them so you get weight a weight right here and a weight right here and a weight right here you get away with three of them and still have a bias okay you start putting more on there then you have the centrifugal force of the weight in time over this one working against that one and then so you start equalizing out the forces so you can only do three weights on a belt okay and a belt is not strong enough it will never go up against gravity to blow that belt even if you make it out of Kevlar you start spinning it fast enough to get enough force there. But, you know, if you're already out in space, so th this was like something we thought, maybe you use this technology, you know, or maybe the Thornton Propulsor, or the other one that the, the International Space Agency was, was looking at. I can't even remember what that's called, but it's that one with the gears in it. You've seen that. One. I've got a, uh, on the uh, PSA dot, an old Master Dukes pay website. We've got uh, uh, some embedment of some of that stuff. Anyway, yeah, so we thought, yeah, it would be a, a way to get around so you if you're already out in space. Here it is with the three weights. So what you get when you do this, and then I thought, well, you know, you put, uh, you could put guide pulleys on it too that bring it down a real wide radius so it doesn't produce much force in here before it hits the really tight one where it goes wicked do and whip cracks around there, okay? So, you know, here's one basically showing the, the three weights in the mass, and it goes around here. When the mass is doing its job around the whip crack, boom, there's no, no other forces going on. Well, there's, these are producing minor forces there and minor forces here at those off angles, and nothing across the horizontal, maximizing the effect. All right, anyway, moving on. What's that? So there's some... Oh, this is a version of that amp circuit. It is a it is a dual inverse complementary pair A B push pull amp A amp B push pulls against amp push A A pushes against pushes and pulls against B. Okay, and output gets powered directly off the power line. This was my 80 watt amp I wanted to do. Plugs right in, rectifies 110 volts, puts it right into the output transistors. Oh, this is more than eight. This would be more than 80 watts. This represents the 
take it straight off. Oh, this would be the 2000 watt one. Whatever 15 amp plug I'll put out. 20 amps. At 125 volts. And put that square wave and put that right into the speaker. Well, no, this is not the. Oh, yeah, see, this one was. Oh, this, I got 80 watts here. This is more like. Yeah, why did I do that? See, because there's a lot of transistors. And that. I don't even need that. <laughs> that this that I've, I've confused it my my thought process with the 80 watt one I wanted to do the little 80 watt one just uses two little transistors on the output takes that 125 volts put it in, puts uh, only a bit of it into the speakers but uses the transistors to do it to control it you know why have anything else you don't need anything else now to establish the ground it uses a little transformer tiny little transformer To provide power to the preamp and at the preamp you establish a ground for the input you take that out that signal out and put it right into right into the dual inverse complement repair ab push pull class run or whatever, I don't know, class d the final word in amplifier does uh, configurations okay Oh, this is the work I'm doing on the Furman crossover, which we got at the Salvation Army, by the way. I'm going to add to it. Please donate. Go to the bucket. Ring a bell. Take a bell with you. Ring a bell. The Ring a Bell Challenge is what I want to put together. All right. Here. What are we doing here? This is... Oh, this was work. This was an idea here. Kind of a... This was an anti-gravity... Uh, I mean, not a... <laughs> this, in, in zero gravity... Uh, this was a um, some mind thought stuff, light speed experiment. You put, you know, a, 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 a sensing device is strong enough to, uh, uh, to able to hold the forces required, and we wanted to find out what forces are required. So we were doing some sort of centrifugal force calculations here on on uh, uh, what radius. And with diameter, uh, you put two pods together, connected together like with cables and, and some kind of framework or whatever, and you could uh, uh, thrust it from the inner 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 edge like you know, like you do a uh, uh, like a car wheel does, but you you know uh, by you multiply the limits of the rocket equation to the ends of the pieces by by that, and so you could ultimately end up with a velocity. Uh, uh, could end up with light speed at the end or above light speed at the end by driving the whole thing from the middle. Okay, so uh, that's the theory anyway. <laughs> so uh, here's some of the work I did. The, the mass equals one kilogram, or just using the mind thought, bringing it into SI units. Circumference two. Yeah, because it's times circumference squared. Yeah equals circumference squared over r radius equals and I never finished that math because the circumference ended up being circumference squared ended up being and then I never finished the division but it was one two three four five